Hello everybody, what is up? My name is Sir Medieval and today we're going to be talking about some more Bless Online, of course. So over the past couple of days, the Bless team has been releasing some much needed information. So we're going to break this down into parts, some of what we already know and then some of what's new. But either way, let's go ahead and get to it, folks. Here we go. So the first thing we want to talk about is the Founders Packs and the base game information. This stuff we already know, so we're just going to blaze through this really quick. So with the Founders Packs, of course, we know that we get a two-day free head start. Um, the actual early access launch starts on May 30th. The early access starts on May 28th at 10 a.m. For the standard edition, you get advanced two days early access, of course, and then 30 days of premium. For the deluxe, the $69.99, you get advanced two days as well. 60 days of premium and then 2,450 Lumina with the exclusive mount skin and pet skin. And then with the collector's edition, the $149.99, you get the advanced head start. Plus a gift copy of Bless, that's a standard edition, which you cannot upgrade by the way. And then you also get a credits title, the founder, which basically means you get your title in the credits underneath the founder section. You also get the twinkling wing effect if you want that. And then of course uh, you get the 90 days premium, you get 3,800 Lumina, and you get the exclusive mount skin, pet skin, costume, and the weapon skin. Now we're going to be going into a little bit of detail later because they did release the pricing on the Lumina and we're going to break it down as to what might be the best option for you. Also for the base game, the it's only $29.99 for that one. Um, there might also be a sale when the game first comes out, but we'll see. But we'll be addressing some community concerns later on too as well, going over the MMORPG interview that was done today and a couple other details for you as well. We also know there's going to be nine dungeons in the game, so the hideout, that's going to probably be... Yeah, the, the underground prison should be the Hiron one, so the hideout should be the one for Union. And then we have the Mausoleum. Um, Sleeping Scales Remains as well. I don't recognize both of those names, so we know one of them is the level 22 Hiron dungeon, and the other one's got to be the level 22 uh, Union dungeon. And then we've got the Mine, of course, that's Dead Mines, so we're going to have Normal and Elite. Elite's probably going to be a level 45 dungeon, so that's going to be one of the 45 dungeons we have access to, along with Kobold Hideout. Kobold Hideout's usually around level 35. The Tala Ruins. That's a max level PvP, or I'm sorry, a max level dungeon. That's going to be 45 as well. Then we have Migraturus, being changed from the name Nigraturus, which is going to be on normal and elite. The uh, the level requirement is usually 43 for Nigraturus, but you'll probably want to go in there at 45. And it uh, usually costs about 6.3 gear score to go in there, so that'll be interesting. And then, of course, we're getting the elite version of that too, which is going to be crazy. I cannot wait for that. So that'll probably be around... Probably around like 7k something gear score. We'll have to see what that one is as well. So you'd probably go into Nigraturus first. Then you probably go for Patala Ruins. Then you probably go for Deadmines Hard. Then Nigraturus Hard, I'm betting, for the Elite. Because I bet that Elite is probably going to be extremely crazy. And of course we know that there's going to be two servers entirely. There's going to be the North American server located in Virginia. And then there's going to be the Euro European server located in Frankfurt. Also today they did confirm that it is actually a mega server. So there's one for NA, one for EU. Not to mention one other thing that we're going over later is that when I told you that after the press conference, they told me that uh, they told they said that there was three channels for NA and then two for EU. Apparently that was right because that was confirmed on the blessed discord today as well. So that's nuts. But we're going to go over that a little later and address the concerns that might be popping up in the community because of that. All right, now here's the fun one. So they actually released the Lumina pricing as well. So we're going to go ahead and break this down for you. We get a better understanding of what we're getting. So I actually have it written down here. So basically for the Lumina, we get $30 worth of Lumina in the max tier founders pack. So that means in the $150 package, we get $30 of Lumina. We get, where is it? 3,600 plus 200. So we get 3,800 total. So what I came up with is that basically if you compare what you get in the max founder packs to this, um, which some people did bring up when it first came out, you could get, so just the $59.99 pack alone, the 7,200 plus 700 would be 7,900. So you'd basically be getting double and then plus 300. And then if also you wanted to go for the 90 day premium, for instance, that'd be $60 for the Lumina and then $40 for the premium. So that's $100 total. So you could get both of those and then save $50 and then come out on top in the end of that. That's if you want to though. When it comes down to the Founders Packs, it really is up to you if you decide you like what's in them more than what you could potentially get. If we get to the first day and you find that better looking costumes, mounts, uh, weapon skins, they're probably going to be in there, then you can just settle for this. You could just go straight for the Lumina and then maybe the Premium and then still save some money. 
Though you could also do, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you could do getting just a standard Founders Pack with like $10 to $20 worth of Lumina since you don't get any Lumina with that package. Or you can also get a month of premium with that, but it, it does come with a month of premium though, so you won't have to worry about that. Or you could, for instance, get the Deluxe Edition with $30 more worth of Lumina and be just fine. Because to reach max level, you're probably, on a single character, only going to need at most a month of premium. Um, past that point, you probably won't even need it. Especially if it doesn't actually count towards the stance levels, but we don't know that for sure yet. Or if you can't spend anything on the game, but just buying the base game, go for an experienced pet early on. You can tame about 20 of the same pets easily with the level 15, 1 to 15 taming scrolls. Then you just level the one with the most attempts, so you'll probably see like 10 attempts on one with two chances to upgrade kind of thing. Just do that, and then try your hand at an XP pet. Once you get one, you really don't have to worry about it at all. If you don't get it on the first time after you've tamed that, those 20 and then, you know, used them all up in sacrificing, that's okay. Just come back when you have some free time and try to get another one. As long as you have those 1 to 15 level taming scrolls, which are very easy to get, and you could probably make them really easy with enchanting, then you're fine. As long as you get one, then that's all you really need. And then you can work on saving up enough activity points to transfer into Lumina so that you can buy like the experience buffs and if they have a potion you can buy that too. But we'll go into that a little bit later as well. Alright, it's the fun part. It's the premium. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Here we go. Alright, so in all seriousness, let's go ahead and talk about what the premium entails and determine if you're going to actually need it or not. So the first thing that you get is the premium mount skin called the Black Wing... I'm sorry, the Black Wind Caligo. Um, that's a nice name actually. You get a premium pet skin as well called the Enchanting Lorishi. Keep in mind that these are not actual mounts and pets. These are just skins that you put on your character and they apply to your pet and mount. Um, also, originally they did say that these would be on rotation. Not sure if that's still the case or not, but I suppose we'll be finding out about that later. And then the next one is reduce the NPC equipment repair fee by 30%. So there's been a lot of talk about this one and it's true. You don't actually even want to use the blacksmith to repair your gear. Um, this one is so negligible, it's probably the most, you don't need this at all, like, thing on the list. Uh, basically, you don't want to ever repair your gear at a blacksmith. Not only will it start adding up in repair costs, but it's just more efficient to use blacksmith hammers, which you can buy on the auction house or make yourself with, like, an alternate character or the main character, if you have armor smithing. But if you do it with repair hammers, you don't lose any durability on your gear. If you go to a blacksmith, you will lose, re you, <laughs> you will lose durability on your gear when you repair it. So don't ever actually go to a blacksmith, and this one right here you can just cross out of the list because you don't need that at all. It's not important whatsoever. The next one, of course, is the pickaxe and the gathering bag. So the pickaxe um, and the gathering tool, they're really cheap actually. I mean, you really don't ever have to pay more than like one copper per. Um, in the Korean version and in the Japanese version, they're really cheap. So I would assume that in the new version, they're going to be very cheap as well. So even if you're just spending like all of your money on just the gathering tools, like you don't have any of the premium stuff for that, then you'll still only be spending like maybe 10 silver every time you visit a general merchant for gathering tools, which is nothing. If you're farming, farming turbines all day, you'll make that money back no problem. So you don't need that in the slightest. Don't even worry about that one. And then the next one on the list is reducing the wyvern usage fee by 50%. So this one is for the dragon tamer. You usually don't have to worry about this one. For the Dragon Tamer, if you're going cross-country, for instance, it's probably going to net you no more than, like, 50 silver. So if you're going somewhere to grind, then you're most more than likely going to just make that money back in 20 minutes anyway. So you always want to have your uh, Hearthstone set to your capital anyway. That way, if you're going, like, if you're at the Southern Peninsula, for instance, or let's say you're in the Northern Region, you can just hearth back to your capital and then have easy access to whatever you need to get to. Like to the point where you could actually walk or just mount up and, you know, go to it. Like Niagara Turris is pretty close to both the Hiram capital and the Union capital. So you really don't ever have to worry about that. It's like right here, except it's taking a long time for me to zoom in. Because for some reason this game doesn't like me zooming in. At least this version doesn't. Yeah, but Turris is like right here. So you would never have to really worry about it. And then the next one, probably the more crazy ones on the list, probably the only ones to really ever worry about, if anything, but you can acquire 20% more hunting experience points, which usually pertains to like elite mob grinding and just mob grinding in general. Um, more than likely, everybody's going to reach 45 within the first two weeks. So past that point, unless stance level actually applies to this, and more than likely, if you actually put the time in, by the way, yes, I'm playing Mystic <laughs> on the old Korean version, it's pretty awesome. 
So think of it this way, rhinos usually give about 3.6k experience and then 20% of that is going to be around 720. So when you really think about it, it'll be about 4.4 around that area. Bless is more of a time-based game. Time-based and skill-based, of course, when it comes to the PvP. So essentially, they might be 20% quicker than you, but it'll still come down to skill in the end. And once you get even a 42% experience pet bonus, uh, that 20% that they get becomes pretty much negligible. If you can get that and then save up enough activity points to convert to Lumina to get the experience bonuses as well, then you'll be perfectly fine. But what would have really mattered is if this premium had the rune breaking system, like if they prevented you from losing your runes on death. Because when it comes down to end game, the thing that's going to matter is your gear, of course, when it comes to PvE, of course, and then your runes are going to help a lot, especially in PvP. Things like that, food buffs, if you want to mid-max, that's what you want to go for. It's really not it comes down to who gets to 45 first. It's who knows how to play the game and knows how to gear their character. So I don't think you have anything to really worry about when it comes to that experience bonus. But if you're worried about it, if you still don't like the idea of it, completely understand. Don't worry about that at all. Completely understand. And then the next one, of course, that we have is you can acquire 20% more dungeon points, which are basically adventure points. That would be a little crazy when it comes to monster hunting. Uh, because in, when you complete the stages, you can get more adventure points then you can end up buying the adventure point boxes from the special shop which do give you a chance to get more Lumiere skins but again that's going to be negligible just because you can also get pets that actually give you more adventure points as well so if they apply for the monster quests as well then you could just use those and be just fine as well and then of course you got the gold uh, the 20% gold that one's not really all that great especially because you get most of your gold from selling the trash that you get from the mobs from the Dragon Ball Crystals, the Ymir skins, all the stuff that you get in the world, like physical items, that's what you get most of your money from. It's very rarely actually coming down to like the gold that you get off like a mob job, because even the elite mobs don't really drop that much gold really. I'd say they drop, if I remember right, like five silver per drop, something, something really weird like that, if they drop any gold at all. It's mainly the trash items, the auction house, that's where you get your gold from, especially. Even quests, like the max level, like main tier quests, they give you like one to two gold per. So they're really good for farming money. By the time you reach max level, you might have somewhere around 30, 40 gold just from those questings. So that's also another thing to keep in mind as well. So that one you don't really have to worry about. And then of course we have, you can allow five more items to be registered in the market. Um, that one's not nearly as bad as something like the increase or decrease in the market tax value by 10%. So if you just can only have five items on the broker, I mean, that's fine, especially if you're selling stuff that sells really quick, then you just wait for that to sell, grab the money, and then put something else on there. Uh, the 10% isn't as bad as like avoiding the market tax entirely. You're still getting taxed 20%, but I understand that stuff adds up. But over time, if you just keep putting the time in, you'll earn so much money that it won't even matter. All, it really comes down to time, like I said. Time spent, um, your skill, of course, in terms of PvP, your knowledge about the game, that's what's going to really matter. Um, you won't really get too far ahead by just putting like 100 Dragon Ball Crystals and then avoiding 10% of that tax rate. That's not going to instantly put Pro on your back or something like that. You shouldn't have to worry about that either. Okay, so we also get the increase in daily activity points exchanged by 20%. So we found out today that you can only transfer up to 50 Lamina. You can only convert up to 50 Lamina a day. So 20% of that is going to be an extra 10. So that means you would only be able to convert 60 a day, 60 a day which of course isn't crazy at all I don't think um, I mean if the if they still have the experience potions um, then uh, if they if they're worth like 80 Lumina for instance then my theory is you could probably save up to 100 Lumina in every like every two days or so depending depending on how much or how long you have to grind for I actually forwarded some questions to chess today uh, one of the community managers about this I wanted to know how long it takes us precisely to grind up to have the ability to convert to that and I also wanted to know like precisely how much these buffs are going to cost that we're going to be able to get that last an hour. That's the only thing that I've seen so far that really gives me like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Hopefully those cost a lot because my theory is if um, the buffs cost like 300, 400 Lumina, for instance, or if they cost quite a bit, then people are only going to be using those for so long. Because if it costs more and like if people don't know what they're doing, they're going to waste them as well. If you get like 24 of those experience buffs and then by the end of that 24 hours you wonder why there's already level like 40s and level 35s in instance and you're still like rocking level 24 characters, then that's because you didn't do it right. Uh, you didn't use it to the best of its ability. For those of you that are competitive and know exactly how to use it, then you're probably going to be farther ahead but eventually everybody's going to catch up. That's the thing is it's all about the time put in. 
So especially if it doesn't, if, if these things don't actually count for like your skill gems, which that's the main problem of concern for people is the skill gems. I haven't seen anything thus far that actually confirms that that one, these count for stance levels when we get to level 45, and that two, this actually helps with getting skill gems faster. Because you only have a daily conversion amount of skill gems per day. You can only convert a certain amount. So as long as that remains a thing, then if these don't count, then it's still going to be balanced in that regard, in the skill gem regard. And that's going to be the main thing, because that's how you upgrade your skills. It's how you get your parameter stances, like your, I'm sorry, your parameters passives, your non-stance skills. So if that remains the same, then I think that part will be perfectly balanced. And the last thing I wanted to mention about those content tokens as well is they are exchangeable whether you purchase the premium membership or not. So as long as you remember that, then you should be just fine as well. All right, now we're going to talk about some community concerns. All right, this is the fun one. Okay, so this one, this first one's a big one. Um, it's about the mega server. So apparently there is going to be, we got this confirmed today, one mega server for NA, one mega server for EU, and it's going to be three channels for NA and two for EU. So I thought that when the developers told me that, and then I heard later on that people were actually getting a different answer, they were getting servers instead of channels, that maybe my, my answer was wrong, maybe um, I didn't ask it right. That's why I said I had to confirm that. But apparently, that was right. So, three for NA, two for EU. First off, elite mobs are going to become a war zone. Like, um, unless they're making them a group activity where you have to bring at least five people to them, even if, even if they do. I'm sorry, but we're going to have probably, I'm predicting like thousands and thousands of people in the server on the first day. It's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> we're going to need more channels for sure. That's my concern as well. I'm not just, not just a community concern, but I'm concerned as well. Um, not because I plan on rushing and I just want to have the elites all to myself. But I mean, in terms of like PVP, um, there's a point where it could get too crazy. Like you could you competitively be trying to grind. And then you got just 20 people around you trying to grind on the same mob, trying to do the same thing. It's just getting nuts. I think that if they increase it to like four to five for each server, because I feel bad for like us on NA, but I feel really bad for EU. They're going to need more for sure. I, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to have to give feedback on that, too. Uh, we're able to actually forward our feedback and the community feedback to the developers via document. So I have included that um, and put it at high priority. I'm, I'm definitely cool with the mega server, and I think people are, too. Um, you know, it might mean that there's less territories to get, because if you only have one server, then that means that you're only going to have a certain amount of designated territories you can take over. So you're going to be going up against top, top guilds. The next one is Steam regional pricing, uh, because I have seen a lot of people start saying things like, like in Australia, for instance, the game costs significantly more for them than in other regions. I, we have brought this up to the developers. They're giving thoughts on it. They're trying to work it out. They want to make a decision before that game actually comes out. We're in the five day period now so hopefully they make that decision soon and then another community concern we have is though the character bound founder skins we found out today as well from chess herself one of the community managers that the skins that we get from the founders packs are actually character bound not account bound i'm really 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 hoping this changes because um i know a lot of people are probably wanting to make multiple characters of course if you want to have crafting characters as well then you probably want to have an alt you know for different professions uh, not only that though but in the future people are planning on going assassin and mystic so you know for sure they're going to want to save those founders pack skins until then i would say um at the moment you probably want to save them don't use them if you're planning on going assassin or mystic not until that gets changes or if it does get changed so don't use it just save it up and then once those characters actually come into play then use them then Warlock as well, whenever that does come as well. That might be a longer time though, so if you're not able to hold out, then hey, you know you can't hold out. And another one that we did bring up to them, because we found out that you can't actually transfer your character skins from like the other versions, the Japanese version and the Korean version for instance. If you transfer them over to North America, the same thing is probably going to happen to you that happened to me. I tried to convert my Korean skin onto the rebuild server. And it came in as an invisible stick figure, so you probably don't want that happening. I would say if we don't get an early character creation that they were considering a while back, or we don't get a pre-download for instance, that you would probably want to save screenshots of your sliders for your character creation. I've seen people saying that they've been doing that. So if you saved your character appearance, go back in there, save what you chose, and then do it that way. That's probably going to be the better way to go. But we're also making it apparent that people probably want the pre-download so that if you have a, you know, your internet's not that great 
then you'll have that ability to pre-download the game so you'll be ready to go as soon as it launches. This would also, of course, uh, require us to buy the game beforehand. So if they make it possible to do that, that'd probably kill two birds with one stone. So that would be nice as well. Another major concern was with the activity points that I saw popping up a lot today. Mainly because you can get, so you can get the activity points by doing your day-to-day -day tasks, but you can only convert 50 of them per day. So it would take you around 24 days to get 1,200. Which, um, of course, you don't want to be able to... You, I, don't, I don't think we were ever expecting to get like $10 in a day kind of thing. I hope, I hope people weren't expecting that because, you know, I figured it would be like BDO's kind of system where with the... What did they call those? The loyalty points. Where you'd get them every day, but it'd be at a really, really slow rate. You'd have to save up for a long time just to be able to get something even basic. So I was expecting something like that, so this kind of does tie into that. But it also depends on how much stuff costs in there. The main reason this was a concern though was because we found out as well from the MMORPG interview that we're going to go over in a little bit that apparently you can buy these one hour experience bonuses, but they're temporary bonuses for things like hunting experience, mount experience, uh, let's see, we got sub crafting and main crafting experience, guild experience, which lasts an hour, which probably, as I was saying before, if that's pretty expensive, if it's like even a hundred Lumina, at a certain point people are going to run out if they just buy those nonstop. People might go for the cosmetics first, the weapon skins, and then have very little left for those items. They might go for the convenient skins as well, like the inventory expansions. So that was the main cause for concern, but if we find out how much those cost, we might be able to gauge that a little better and then go forward on that one. And then of course the last one was the one hour buffs that you could buy in the cash shop. Uh, I, was, I was under the impression that when they said convenience items, they would have the experience potion, the 30 day one. But they might have wanted to stray from that because maybe they saw that as pay to win. Uh, the one hour experience bonus and stuff like that, that makes it a little tougher. Because if people spam that, of course, then they might have that 20% bonus ongoing. That's if it stacks, though, with the with the premium bonus itself. Which I'm thinking the premium bonus might be its own separate buff. Though this experience buff that you buy in the cash shop probably will. That makes it a little harder com to compete with that bonus. Not the people themselves, but the bonus. Because if you, even if you get the 42% experience pet, they can get one too, and that just barely makes it negligible. So I would say, if you can, save up enough content tokens, and then convert those into the Lumina to get those one hour buffs. Use those at a certain point in the day. So like if you're going to do elite mob grinding, you have a clear spot, it's like early in the morning, 6am for instance, use it then. Use it then with your pet experience potion and just go ham, and then get all the experience you can possibly get. And then the second to last thing we want to talk about is the new MMORPG interview that we discovered today, which also contains information like the temporary buffs that we're going to be able to obtain in the cash shop. I think that you'll be able to get past these. Like I explained before, when it comes to the experience bonus, just go for an XP pet, try to get those buffs by getting the content tokens and converting them into Lumina. And then of course the skill gems might not even apply to this, the freaking stance levels might not even apply to this, and the stance levels entirely. Um, when we get those last two stances, they might be just as balanced as the regular stances. So whoever gets there first doesn't really matter. Um, it's more about who's practiced more, who's been skilled more, that kind of thing. You really don't have to worry about that in the end because really it's a PvP-based game mainly. So the person who spends more time PvPing as opposed to just sitting there 18 hours a day grinding elite mobs, that person that PvP is going to have more of an advantage. So I'd say you definitely don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to go ahead and read this for you. Let's see what they said. So MMORPG asks, how many shops are there and what does each contain? Neo was said, players may be able to purchase items with Lumina or activity points at the special currency shop. Lumina can be purchased with cash and also be obtained by playing the game. With Lumina, players will be able to purchase the following items, with no pay to win elements included. So they have the temporary buff items I was talking about, the increased experience gained from hunting by 20%, reduced consumption of the mount or pet's energy points by 20%, Convenience items like inventory expansion tickets, resurrection after effect removal, that's called the holy water, teleport scrolls, etc. You probably like your your gear repair hammer that repairs all of your gear to full, your gathering and mining tools, stuff like that in the convenience part. And then costumes slash skins, cosmetics that don't give any extra advantages. So activity points cannot be purchased from the cash shop or with the cash with cash and can only be obtained by playing the game. Players may purchase the following items with activity points. Spirit. Increase equipment points by equipping spirits. So runes. Crafting. Slash enhancement materials. We did see that in the special shop. 
Crafting slash enhancement, upgrading some materials, increase the success probability chance when attempting to craft, enhance equipment, and upgrade pets or mounts. So Ymir skins and Ymir horns is what they're talking about when they're talking about the gear enhancement. In terms of the pets and mounts, I don't think I've seen that item yet, as a matter of fact. I thought I saw it, I know I saw it like in there, in the pet window, but I've never seen how to get that item. So that part's going to be pretty interesting. I'm glad we can buy that with activity points. And then of course, enhancement. Upgradings, prevention, risks, so prevents maximum durability or enhancement stage from decreasing if enchantment fails or upgrading fails. So like the Ymir skin, they did confirm, they said that we wouldn't have a way to like dismantle cash shop costumes and then get an item from it to guarantee that you wouldn't lose durability on it, that kind of thing. And then of course they said convenience items like allowing to change a pet, a pet or mount skill, which is going to be very nice to see as well. Then MMORPG asks, what can players expect? every month from the premium subscription. Rather than calling it a premium subscription, we think that it would be more accurate to call it a premium status. Players will be able to get two convenience items, pickaxe and gathering bag, temporary buffs and exclusive mount and pet skins through the 30 day premium, which might also be on rotation, hopefully it is because that'd be really nice. This premium membership does not give buffs that directly increase a character's stats or equipment score. The update frequency for items, buffs and skins which can be attained through premium membership has not been decided yet. Okay, so yeah, that hasn't been decided yet, it looks like. MMORPG asks again, the cash shop was mentioned as having convenience items. Will those include boost to leveling? Are there any other types of boosts we can see in the cash shop? Users can purchase buff items, which give the ability that lasts for one hour through the Lemina shop. These items have the following effects. Increase experience gain from hunting by 20%. Increase experience gain from mounts and pets by 20%. Increase the experience from main and sub crafting by 20% and guild experience by 20%. So this is probably the only thing that really worries me about the cash shop. That's why I'm trying to find out like how much these things cost. Because if you're able to still get enough Lumina to use these like once a day maybe, then it's probably still be good. I think if they were probably on like a day cooldown where you can only use once a day no matter what, premium or not, it'd probably be a lot better. But I mean, if you're still buying like 30 of these a day, um... And let's say you're just doing side quests all day, then you're probably going to be wasting them anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but yeah, I could totally understand this one, absolutely. The experience one is the only one that really matters there, but again, if it doesn't count for stance level or gems, then we don't have to worry about it too, too much. We'll all reach the same point eventually. And then it does say most buff items can be purchased by using up to 50 Lumina a day, which can be obtained by the activity points to Lumina exchange system. So if you just use all of your activity points just on the experience bonus alone, let's say you're able to buy like, let's say these things cost 20 per. You do two hours, so you just do like a, a mob grinding session where you do the monster hunts for two hours. Or let's say you do the, uh, the elite mob farming for two hours. That'd probably be enough to keep you in the league or even ahead of people who don't really know what they're doing in terms of this. And then just skipping through the rest of this, this is a lot of stuff that we already really know. There's going to be no loot boxes, of course. Thank you, by the way, no loot boxes. And then of course this part is really good where in order to reset skill gems there was talk about using a reset scroll. Will this be something purchasable to the cash shop or will players be able to mer purchase multiple trait loadouts for fast trait switching? And then players will only be able to purchase a skill tree reset or an extra tactic save ticket through the Lumina store. However, just as we mentioned, non-paying users will also have to obtain these two items through activity points slash Lumina, Lumina. If the player does not have an extra save ticket, they will have to change their character's tactics manually, but changing it manually doesn't take a lot of time, so it shouldn't matter too much. And then of course, storage space, they'll have the inventory expansions in the Lumina store, and you shouldn't have to worry about that too much. It might mean, mean some extra downtime between going back to the store to sell your stuff and then of course dismantling, but eventually they're going to have events. They might even have them all right off the bat, like the Japanese version where they give you free Lumina, and then you could just save up to buying an inventory expansion slot. And you could probably use the content tokens to buy those as well. You probably only need like three max, and then you'd be just fine when it comes to like elite mobs and dungeon farming. You probably have enough inventory to do anything you really wanted to. And then the last thing I wanted to go over was the Q&A from the Blessed team. So will there be a dungeon reset item? Although they do exist, we do not plan to sell it for cash. Thank goodness, we won't see this in the cash shop, so that's going to be really nice. Um, that basically means that we'll always have the one, one a day thing, and we'll always have the one a week for raids. You don't have to worry about that part. So in terms of getting your gear, if you want to get more quicker, you're going to have to create more characters and max them out. Then you can use that as a way to switch characters and then get your gear faster by running dungeons all day long, basically. And then, of course, the raid. 
What are the benefits of being in the guild? I like this one as well. Depending on the guild's influence, there are special items that the guild can buy. It is also one of the few ways to obtain flying mounts. And this one I've actually seen a little bit of. Um, it, may, it mostly pertains to the flying mounts, but I'm pretty sure we might be able to buy legendary equipment in here as well, with the influence points, of course. And this is done through governance points. So this is the reward that I told you we got for owning territory that you could buy the, like the raid potions with. This is what that's going to be. Apparently there's also like jewelry in here that they might have in the new one. And then of course we got the flying mounts as well. Seven days of course, but you should be able to buy those repeatedly if you keep the, if you keep the territory and if you keep your rank in PvP as well. And then the next one is, what can players gain by doing faction PvP? I like this one too. By dueling within your faction or engaging with players of the opposite faction in PvP, players can gain combat points, so the honor of course. And then you also get the combat experience that counts towards your rank, so that's what they're talking about there. So using combat points, or activity, activity points, players can buy items from the special currency shop. Which is going to be really, really nice, actually. So that's the runes that you can buy, the Ymir skins, all that kind of stuff. The crafting materials as well. Will there be player-to-player -player trading? No, there will not be. Aside from the in-game auction house, there is no feature that allows player-to-player -player trading as we do not want the black market. So I actually think I understand why they have it to where there's no player trading or there's fixed auction house pricing. On the Korean version, the old Korean version that I'm playing right now where I'm actually able to play the Mystic and enjoy the level 50 content, I actually found out that the auction house didn't actually have a fixed price in. So you could set it at whatever price you wanted to. Now in terms of that, um, I don't think that the issue was there as much as the botting that was probably going on where people were just doing... Because you know with player trading, it usually invites botting, and this time this game was coming out around the time that BDO was, so they probably looked at that game and how successful it was at the time, because we were really excited, I remember, about the fact that they were actively going to be combating botting, um, and they probably took, took some ideas from that, or just wanted to incorporate it in their game as well. So I think that I can understand why they don't want player trading. They don't want to have to deal with the botting, even if it's buy-to-play. The fact that you can trade would make it very susceptible to bots, the fixed auction house pricing, I suppose you can get that too. You could trade necessarily, you could put like a random like level 25 boot on the auction house for like 500 gold and then buy it on the character to transfer gold basically and get around the player trading. Yeah, you could do that as well. Or like another account basically. Wow, I've been playing for 11 hours. But yeah, that I understand. And hopefully you guys warm up a little bit to that idea knowing that now. And then of course we have how often can updates be expected? So for this one, although we plan to update the game every month, big updates can be expected around every three months. For example, we plan to add the Assassin class for the first big update. Afterwards, new classes, level increases, and the new Battlefield content can be expected in a similar sized update. So for this one, um, the Assassin was said that we were going to get it after about three months because it's saying that every three months is where the big updates are going to be. So Assassin's the class that's coming first, and then it's going to be Mystic. They said originally that Early Access itself was going to last around 6 months. So I'm thinking around the time that Mystic comes out, just like in this old Korean version, we're going to get level 50 content, and that island that they're talking about, that Battlefield content, was what I actually asked about in the developer interview, where that was going to be the floating island, the max level PvP zone. So that's going to be amazing as well to get. We'll get level increases, we'll probably get new dungeons, because actually in this version, you actually get access to a lot more dungeons when it comes to level 50 content. Look at this right now. So we got Zito's Laboratory, we got Tomb of the Warrior King, which is three times a, re a week, that's probably a raid. We got Temple of Ash, Ash Lua, we got the Catacombs, we got Erdata War Fortress, we got all these other raids and dungeons to look forward to, So I think that will have enough content to last us a good while. So they bring out level 55 content or wherever they plan to take bless in the future. So I hope for all of our sakes that you guys are okay with these kinds of things happening. I hope that we went over all the points. I hope you're still excited for bless. If you're not, if you're worried about anything that's went over, been went over the past few days, completely understandable. If you're really worried about the game entirely, I'd say wait for reviews. You know, wait for people to actually see what's in the game, you know. We'll find out about the optimization soon enough. We'll find out about the cash shop soon enough. We'll find out about all that information for you. We'll be able to tell you and relay that information to you, and you'll be able to decide for yourself if this is the game for you. Hopefully, Bless turns out to be the game that we're all hoping for. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll be able to give Bless a chance. And we'll see you next time.
Later, folks. I've been loving the heck out of Mystic.